You know why you don't hunt with an AR-15 with a deer? Because there's nothing left. And there's nothing left of these kids when people go into school and murder them while they're trying to read. You guys are worried about banning books? Dead kids can't read. Wait, what was that? Dead kids can't read. Marjorie Taylor Greene thought it was a smart idea to challenge the congressman from Parkland on the issue of school shootings. And I think it's safe to say it did not go well for her. Marjorie Taylor Greene and her three little toes really stepped in it this time. The heated exchange started with Representative Jared Moskowitz stating the facts about gun violence and calling out the Republican Party's hypocrisy. 550 people have been murdered in school. Who cares about the cars? What about the kids? No hearing for them. 338,000 kids have experienced gun violence in this country. The number one killer of school-aged children in this country, gun violence. How do you think for the parents who have had to bury their kids, who have had to decide what to put their kids, what kind of clothes to put their kids in when they bury them, or what kind of box they have to pick out for their child, or for when they come home and that room in their house is empty. What do you think about for the parents who have all their kids' stuff and they don't know what to do with it? What do you think about the parents? No high school graduation, no college graduation, no wedding, no grandkids, no future. What do you think those parents who have buried their kids think that we're holding a hearing to talk about DC public urination? You know, speaking of crime, Republican on Republican crime. Former President Donald Trump held a rally in Waco, Texas with his Rasputin Ted Nugent. He said the number one national security threat to this great nation isn't Russia or China or DC crime, but is an 81-year-old slip and fall survivor in Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. I, I'm just wondering if you know, we're gonna find time in between you know, some folks here attending the next rally to celebrating Timothy McVeigh if we're gonna find time to hold a hearing on mass murder in schools. When are we having that hearing? We wanna talk about crime and murder. Let's have a hearing on murder in schools. It's murder. Is there any, any question? I'll yield to anyone on this committee who disagrees that murder in schools is not murder. I yield. Regardless of where you sit on the political spectrum, right, center, or left, I hope we can all agree that murder in schools is still murder, and there should be no debate about it. However, the pathological line, gun-loving idiot Marjorie Taylor Greene took Moskowitz's bait and opened her mouth. I'll yield to anyone on this committee who disagrees that murder in schools is not Murder, I yield. Will you, will you yield? Oh, I'll yield, yes, please. The fact that Marjorie Taylor Greene is challenging the congressman from Parkland, Florida is unbelievable, but also believable. Yeah, I was, when I was in 11th grade and Joe Biden made our schools gun-free school zones, one of the students in my school brought three guns to school and our entire school went on lockdown because he was the only person with a gun. There was no good guy with a gun to protect us kids at school. You want to know why the shooter is dead in Nashville, the trans shooter? You want to know why? Because a good guy with a gun killed that woman. She identified as a man. She was mentally ill, probably taking hormones, and she went in and murdered children and adults in this Christian school in Nashville. So if you want to have a good talk about schools and protecting children, we need to talk about protecting our children the same way we protect our president, we protect our celebrities, yeah. we protect Re reclaiming this building. My time. Okay. Honestly, I was surprised that Marge knew how to stop talking and... Uh... Well, per usual, her argument was full of lies and nonsense. If we take a closer look at the incident that took place on September 6, 1990, we begin to see holes in her story. In September 1990, Marge was enrolled at South Forsyth High School in Georgia when a fellow student 
held hostages at gunpoint. She claims her high school was a gun-free school zone because of Biden's Gun-Free School Zone Act of 1990. In 1990, George H.W. Bush was the president, Joe Biden was a senator, and Biden wasn't even a co-sponsor on the bill. It's also not possible to blame the September 6, 1990 incident on this bill, since it wasn't introduced until October 27, 1990, and then signed into law on November 29, 1990. So unless Marge is traveling back in time and rewriting the events of history, this is a huge hole in her story. Come on, man. And when it comes to the incident itself, the witness accounts tell a different story than what Marjorie Taylor Greene is now telling. Marjorie Taylor Greene claims that her entire school went on lockdown. However, non-hostage students were evacuated and bused to a nearby elementary school. And finally, while records do indicate that she was a student at the high school during that time, she definitely was not one of the students taken hostage, and according to the school spokesperson, her attendance on that day could not be verified. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she was stealing the traumatic experience of her former classmates for political gain and relevance. Because the first time she ever told this story was on the House floor in February 2021. She had to defend herself and her past remarks, like when she called the Parkland School shooting a false flag operation, or when she harassed David Hogg, a Parkland School shooting victim. And how did you get kids? Why do you use kids? Why kids? You know, if school, if school zones were protected by, with security guards with guns, there would be no mass shootings at schools. Do you know that? The best way to stop a bad guy with a gun is with a good guy with a gun. But yet you're attacking our Second Amendment. So now, whenever there's a school shooting, Marjorie Taylor Greene makes sure to tell her new story about how she was a victim of a school shooter. Here she is on Tucker Carlson in May 2022 in response to the deadly school shooting in Uvalde. There was no adult there with a gun in our school because our schools had turned into gun-free zones. This is because yes. of Joe Biden and the crime bill that they passed back in 1990. The only reason that Marjorie Taylor Greene does this is to advocate for more guns in schools, which we know doesn't work. And if you look at the recent school shooting in Nashville, the Covenant School reportedly had one or two staff members carry guns on a regular basis, and even they couldn't stop it. Bottom line, Marjorie Taylor Greene has repeatedly used this news story as an excuse to blame Joe Biden, even though it had nothing to do with him. You know, just like the time that she blamed Biden for the fentanyl deaths that actually happened under Trump's presidency. It's a common tactic used by Republicans to own the libs, and it backfires on them almost every time. And most recently, the topic of guns was no different. You know, there are six people that are dead in that school, including three children, because you guys got rid of the assault weapons ban. Because you guys made it easy for people who don't deserve to have weapons, who are mentally incapable of having weapons of war, being able to buy those weapons and go into schools. I voted for SROs in my schools in, in Florida after Parkland. We have SROs on every school. Did the good guys with the guns stop six people from getting murdered? No. But you know what? AR-15s, you know seen what those bullets do to children? You know why you don't hunt with an AR-15 with a deer? Because there's nothing left. And there's nothing left of these kids when people go into school and murder them while they're trying to read. You guys are worried about banning books? Dead kids can't read. Well, until next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez, and this has been What Was That? If you enjoyed today's episode and want to support the work that goes into creating the What Was That show, you can join my Patreon at whatwasthatshow.com. You'll get access to early episodes, exclusive bits, behind-the-scenes content, access to the show's private Discord, as well as live Q&As to connect directly with me to offer up comments, questions, and suggested topics to be featured on the show. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you over on Patreon.